What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Wednesday night. It is February 1st, 2023, about 9.41 p.m. here along the West Coast, and the latest earthquake activity shows a 2.2 over here around the, uh, let's see exactly where this is at, Slovenia area, it looks like. Latest quake popping up there on the map, 10 kilometers deep. Before we get into earthquake activity, going to chat about uh, a little bit about some uh, underwater volcano activity kicking up around the Vanuatu area. Looks like uh, around the Vanuatu air, uh, islands located between Australia and Fiji, uh, there was an underwater volcanic eruption on Wednesday. Looks like uh, quite a few folks did report uh, that volcanic eruption there on Twitter. Couple images here from Philip May Sail, uh, East uh, Epi, Epi, I believe it is, submarine volcano eru eruption this morning. Uh, pretty awesome looking. Not a huge major event, but nonetheless, any underwater volcanic uh, eruption is uh, kind of visual. It does give some dramatic images out there. And again, this is on Twitter from Philip May Sail at uh real philip maysell on twitter so all right uh vanuatu of course sits down here there have hasn't really been too much earthquake activity popping off here recently uh in terms of larger scale movement a quick look at the emsc model here shows that uh, in the quiet zone so a lot of times when earthquake activity does tend to go quiet uh, we see some uh well volcanic activity and that's kind of taking place there around the vanuatu area uh, looks like on yester uh, yesterday's time frame. So what do we have for right now? Well, things have gone uh, somewhat quiet here across the Fiji and the New Zealand area. I think we need to bring up the EMSC model here to see uh, a couple smaller quakes over the last 24 hours, including, uh, well, looks like some fours and uh, even a couple threes down here into the uh, New Zealand area. Seen a 3.0. South Island, New Zealand looks like it's just off the Alpine Fault here. Uh, somewhat deep at about 99 kilometers into that area of South Island. And uh, still seeing a little bit of movement here around the uh, New Guinea area and also the Banda Sea region, all showing some fours over the last 24 hours. Uh, a little bit of activity also up off the coast here of Japan. That's going to be this uh, earthquake up here. Uh, coming in earlier this afternoon, 94 kilometers deep for a 4.4. Now, I think here... Um, let's see, we should start really start seeing some activity really ramping up here around the Mariana Trench northward, uh, considering all the activity we've witnessed across the area around the Banda Sea and the Maluka Sea over the past week or so. Things are uh, coming to a halt here around this area, so things should start to pick up here, uh, make some adjustment northward. We'll watch this area. Basically, Kurokam Chaka Trench down through Izu Trench and the Mariana Trench here for some activity. Uh, keep a very close eye on that. Uh, and again, a little bit of uptick here around the uh, area north of the Mediterranean Sea. We've seen a couple twos up here, as noted. Uh, looks like a 2.3 out around France as well. Now, it's not uncommon, definitely not uncommon to see earthquake activity out there, but... Uh, uh, definitely noticeable in the terms of the magnitude or uh, the multitude of quakes here uh, over the last 24 hours in this area. Kind of been our hot spot uh, right now. The Atlantic Ocean, very quiet, not a whole lot going on across the uh, divergent boundaries out there. South America region, um, kind of been our area to watch as well. Let's see what we got for the USGS report here. Uh, most of the activity from earlier this afternoon, including a 4.2 down in Argentina. Also uh, near the San Antonio de los Cobres, Argentina area. Somewhat of a deep 211 kilometer deep earthquake into the Peru Chile Trench. Up here off the coast of Ecuador uh, earlier this afternoon as well. Looks like we've seen a 5.0. Uh, but definitely, an, I would say, a noticeable increase in activity along this uh, entire area of the Peru Chile Trench, uh, along with some smaller quakes in there as well around Chile. Um, you know, kind of squeezing this area around the Caribbean plate here recently. That's been our other hot spot of earthquake activity. It's it's very noticeable 
around this region right now. And the general plate tectonics here, let me bring up the uh, general uh, plate movement here. I, uh, I need to keep this image downloaded here because I use it a lot, but uh, I'll figure it out. So around the Caribbean plate, there's a couple different subduction zones. They're not showing all of them. We've got a major subduction zone over here along the eastern area of the Caribbean plate and also the Puerto Rico Trench. Uh, but as a whole, uh, this plate's kind of moving towards the north. But there's a lot going on. It's a very small plate being squeezed in between two major plates here. you got the uh, North American plate here to the north and the brown, and then the South American plate, a huge plate pushing up from the south. And uh, not to mention the Cocos Plate here. And uh, there's, there's a whole lot going on here around the Caribbean Plate recently. And we're seeing that uh, within this region here over the last couple days. And more specifically over here around the Dominican Republic and the Puerto Rico Trench. We have not seen an uptick in swarming here around the Puerto Rico area return yet. And I think when it's quiet like that, I think things uh, they tend to pop off here in the larger scale department around the area. So uh, I think we need to watch this area pretty closely. Uh, Jamaica, around Jamaica, seen a 4.4 earlier, uh, actually late last night, I should say, uh, and around the uh, Dominican Republic, that 5.0 coming in uh, just after about three o'clock in the morning. Over here around the El Salvador area, Guatemala region, early this afternoon, a 4.4. And again, an overall snapshot shows uh, increasing activity across that region. I think we all can agree that that's, um, that's an area to watch pretty closely. A lot of dynamics taking place here um, in this region. 4.0 down south. Um, uh, doesn't look like the EMSC is reporting that earthquake up here. It's going to be this one right here. Let me see when this popped off. Uh, just off the coast of Mexico at 0336 on today's time frame so a couple hours ago uh, as it is february 2nd on the utc time universal time and uh, that was that was a couple hours ago it looks like uh, so again some movement kicking up here around this area of off just off the coast of mexico and of course what takes place here around the southern area uh, the North American plate uh, ultimately adjusts some areas up north here. Uh, north America has been seeing a little bit of uptick in activity into the Texas region, a 2.6 coming in. Uh, quite a few twos as well across the area of Pecos, Texas. Did see some Oklahoma earthquake activity earlier and one earthquake out around the New Madrid seismic zone from uh, early this morning. Nothing else across the eastern portion of the country though. Over here around the Southern California area, kind of keeping my eyeball on uh, this one. Now the swarming activity around Thousand Palms, California. Um, it's kicking up a little bit. Um, that is just on the North American side of the plate boundary in an area where we would expect to see pressure uh, transfer and that would be off the plate boundary here, the San Andreas Fault. We haven't really seen anything since new, um, yeah, about noontime. But uh, just kind of watching it, seeing how it plays out. It is around a major stressed area. You know, you got a spring so tight here. Basically, if you can picture in your mind a uh, wound up spring that's been building up for, uh, well, over 300 years here. It's, it's been that long since we've seen a, a major rupture along the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment. Um, of course, we had some other earthquake activity up north. But along this segment here, it's been uh, it's been building up. You know, I remember my parents talking about uh, the big one coming. You know, the California's going to fall off in the ocean. We're waiting for the big one. Well, this is the big one that everyone's talking about. But California is not going to slide off into the ocean because, well, there's no deep trench out here off the coast of Southern California. So literally, you would have to have a major trench out here along this area of the ocean uh, to get even a possibility. Of this being subducted underneath the water it's just not it's not possible geologically uh, a little bit of activity off the san jacinto fault zone a point two and uh, a little bit of activity up north here on the garlock fault as well near mojave 1.2 coming in ridgecrest did see a little bit of uptick in activity including a 3.1 today uh, of course the area around the region's been quite active since about 2019 
course, the July 4th, July 5th earthquake sequence back there on those uh, couple of the large earthquakes. Uh, nothing too much going on around the Bay Area. Now, across the areas of the Cobb Mountain region, Calpine hydrothermal operations in full force, it looks like. That's uh, very typical for this area. No major unusual movement. Uh, if we start to see some fours and fives, and I'm going to be like, okay, what's going on here? Uh, Northern California, one earthquake here from this morning, a 2.2 to south of Eureka. Now the trimmer map here tonight, bring up the trimmer map. Uh, looks like there was about 51 epicenters. Northern California missing out on that trimmer count tonight, mostly up into Oregon. Uh, no subsequent earthquake activity, though, upstream across the area of Oregon. All looks uh, fairly calm for now, but still stress areas along the Cascadia subduction zone has been increasing uh, over the past couple of weeks with that trimmer activity. Into the Pacific Northwest, uh, more explosions going on, it looks like. Uh, also outside of Victoria, a couple of query blasts has been uh, reported. One outside of Salem, Oregon as well. No major earthquake movement to report across the volcanoes. And Yellowstone National Park uh, showing a couple small earthquakes listed up here today. I'm really surprised that they're uh, showing even the smaller microquakes. But hey, that's, you know, that's definitely uh, noteworthy to mention. Some of those smaller microquakes occurring earlier this afternoon. There's a little bit more than two of them. But hey, at least they're reporting, uh, you know, they're reporting a couple. That's good. Right now, there is no major swarm going on across Yellowstone. Everything looks fairly calm uh, and um, quiet for now. Uh, let's see, Canada looks clear across the board, but we do want to check Earthquakes Canada and see what's going on here across the area. Not seeing any major movement, nothing in uh, any red or purple circles. One little small earthquake here outside of the Quebec area, but that's about it. All right, uh, Alaska region, nothing showing up in the last hour. Most of the activity been confined to the uh, Denali area and also a little bit of activity around the Trident Volcano. But overall, no major adjustment. Uh, if anything, if I were to say anything about this, uh, you guys see that right there? Kind of popped up. Little error message going on. Against been having some issues with a computer here recently. And I don't think they're computer issues. They're kind of outside interference issues from who knows who, individuals uh, or or agencies. I don't know. But uh, I'm trying to figure it out. And um, it's just one of those things that I'm just going to do my best to make sure I have 100% solid evidence before I uh, go through with anything. All right. Uh, so if I were to say anything about the Alaska area, uh, a noticeable increase across the Cook Inlet area. Notice this cluster of earthquakes here. Uh, that's definitely uh, it's a little bit more than what is normal here for this area. Of course, there's a couple major fault systems that do run through here and a major subduction zone down south. So we'll keep an eye on that. Big Island, Hawaii. Doesn't look like anything's changed out here. Got one earthquake down at the Lohi Seamount at 1.7 been a while since we've seen any uh, earthquake activity around the South Rift Zone. We'll continue to watch that, though. But, uh, you know, eventually, over time, newer volcanic activity will occur as a Pacific plate shifts to the northwest over this hotspot region. Of course, Hawaiian islands have been formed over hotspots and uh, new volcanoes. New land mass will form over the uh, who knows you know how many, how many years, quite a bit. But uh, yeah, eventually I think, you know, we're going to see further earthquake activity offshore here as uh, further volcanic activity increases. Um, Lohi Seamount, that's going to be, uh, you know, one of the main islands one day. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Of course, Philippines had that six-pointer, 4.6 .6 early this morning. Nothing else popping off up here on the USGS map. And a look at the EMSC model. I uh, see a couple smaller quakes there around the Philippines and down south into the Indonesia area. But, uh, yeah, you know, no, it actually, it looks a lot quieter today compared to the weeks past in this region. All right, New Zealand, uh, a couple threes and some fours. So for that matter, let's go check out the folks there at the, um, the GeoNet server there for New Zealand. 
still shown 10 hours ago for a 2.0. All magnitudes map here. Uh, looks like a couple ones. Here's a 3.0. South Island, that's going to be that 99 kilometer deep just off the Alpine Fault about an hour ago. A couple other ones and twos. Here's a 3.9 Kermadec Trench, 213 kilometers deep just north here, that little circle. And uh, 4.6 also two hours ago, 190 kilometers deep into the Kermadec Trench. Looks like, uh, you know, kind of, to me it kind of looks like things are starting to, I don't know if I want to use the word unzip, but uh, realistically, if you think about all the activity here the past couple months along the Tonga Trench uh, and portions of the Kermadec Trench northward, all the sixes and sevens here over the last couple months with very minimal activity and adjustment around New Zealand recently, that, uh, that could be a, you know, for sure a sign of maybe something building up out here. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the last time a uh, you know somewhat of a larger earthquake popped off out here. We're going to go with uh, 6.0. Uh, yeah, we'll do 6.0 and above over the last year. I just kind of want to get a visual and uh, see what's going on here across the area of New Zealand specifically. Not worried about too much about uh, the Tonga area. We know there's been some some larger quakes, but I want to see what's going on out here uh, across the New Zealand area. And uh, that's it from last year, August, 6.0 and above uh, across you know a major plate boundary. 6.0 and above that 6.6 .6 in the uh, Kermadec Islands back in August, 2022. Um, you know, I can't really say we're overdue for an earthquake out here, but uh, it, it's building. It's definitely building out there, uh, according to uh, you know some of these models that are showing that earthquake activity dipping down into the New Zealand area. All right, uh, what else do we have? One earthquake around the Myanmar area. We've seen a 4.5. That one coming in just uh, oh earlier this afternoon. It looks like. That's still our watch area as well. It's been filling in slightly with a couple fours here and there, but uh, I think we're overdue for something here along this region. This is a major, uh, a major plate boundary out there, subduction zone area that uh, should see, definitely should see. This is going to be, uh, let's see where we're at, Australian plate. Uh, this is very similar to what's going on up here along the Curl Kamchaka Trench. We got all sorts of plate boundaries colliding within the Java Trench area northward. Here's the India Plate moving off towards the northeast. Himalaya subduction zone area over here. Um, so all this area around the northern end of the Java Trench into the Myanmar area uh, does not take a lot of time for uh, earthquake activity to build up, or at least enough slip rate and enough stress to build up uh, for a large earthquake. So, uh, you know, these regions here got this area and the Krokom Chaka Trench all should be uh, popping off here soon. I mean, it's just, of course, i got to remember the longer it uh, holds off, the bigger that quake will be. One earthquake, it looks like around the Ma uh, Mammoth Lakes area, 1.4 coming in within the last uh, few minutes. Let's see, what else do we have here? Checked out Yellowstone, we checked out the Trimmer. Uh, let's check out the space weather here real quick. Things are looking uh, fairly neutral across the board here for uh, solar weather activity. Look at the uh, magnetic structure here of uh, a couple of different new sunspots emerging around the southeastern limb of the sun. Well, watch this one right here. It doesn't look super pro promising, but uh, it is... I don't know, getting a little bit of complex magnetic structure. That's going to be 3207, and there's a newer sunspot behind it. That's going to be trailing along. Uh, 3208 up here looks like it has uh, remained roughly about the same. A little bit of growth over here along the western edge. We'll watch that for some potential uh, here in the coming days, but uh, no major, absolutely no major threat for any uh, flaring currently. And uh, the three-day looks pretty green. Not a whole lot of uh, aurora potential up there for the folks in the higher latitudes, unfortunately, right? We need some good events to pop off here to get the uh, activity brewing. 
Uh, alrighty, so I was going to go out tonight and do, um, see if I can't get a, uh, a couple shots of that uh, comet that everyone's been talking about tonight and tomorrow night. It's supposed to be the closest uh, that it's been to Earth here in about 50,000 years. And um, unfortunately, we got some high clouds popping up into Northern California, putting a damper on my uh, photography plans here tonight. So I, I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to get out there and get those shots tonight, but maybe in the morning uh, before sunrise. We'll see if I want to get up that early, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll go peek out there right now and see if uh, see if the uh, see if the clears skies have cleared up any. Uh, let me see here. Let me go over to the uh, Windy app and see what we have for cloud cover right now. Uh, there's a massive... Goodness, that's a huge jet stream, uh, upper level jet stream shift right there. Let me go over here to the cloud. See, here's some of the high clouds scooting into the area. Around the Chico area, very thin layer of high cloud. So... Um, Looks like there's a little break in between the storm system coming in tomorrow and this uh, the high cloud. So maybe maybe I'll go out there and it'll be clear. Either way, we got a little bit of rain coming in. Nothing major at all, folks. There's just a couple um, a couple low syst or low pressure systems coming in, bringing in uh, a little bit of rain accumulation here. This is an EM or ECM model. Showing the next 10 days of precipitation out here along the west coast. Oregon northward getting in on brunt on the uh, brunt of the activity. Around the Chico area, it looks like here in the Sacramento Valley, we could pick up an inch, which is very minimal compared to what we had earlier last month, uh, the beginning of the year. So this is over the next 10 days, uh, one inch. That's, you know, everything will help. I'm not going to complain. But uh, we'll see how this plays out. There's a little bit of pattern uh, back here, way out into the Pacific, uh, pretty good uh, moisture plume that uh, just kind of needs to shift south a little bit. Right now, Vancouver Island ranges northward, getting in on a bunch of precipitation here uh, over the next couple days. All right, folks, so um, I'm also going to be doing quite a few shorts here. Uh, YouTube has put out a, uh, well, it kind of sent me a notification here, kind of encouraging me to... Uh, put out shorts here on this video so we may be doing um, some alternative stuff out there for the videos that appear in shorts that in could include some night shots um, and maybe some weather stuff we'll see how it uh, plays out but uh, just kind of testing it a little bit testing the waters of the shorts videos I know they're actually a pretty popular theme right now and I'm um, just gonna see how it see how it works alrighty guys have a good night uh, brain overload from school of course Missy Mimi's uh, in the schooling as well she's not uh, feeling too good got a big headache tonight from all the school work so we'll be sending her some positive thoughts take care folks we'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow have yourself a beautiful evening out there take care